welcome back. So, this is our last topic uh, in natural hazard, one of the most important one since uh, most of us mainly the people who were who were staying along the east coast and the west coast of Indian mainland were surprised and even the people uh, from Andaman were surprised and shocked to have 2004 tsunami. But I would say that this is not the, the first time such tsunami has occurred in this region. We have signatures that in past also uh, during uh, recent historic past also the, this region has experienced uh, much larger tsunamis than what we experienced in 2004. That was the source was from Bandache, Indonesia, but even we can have similar large magnitude or maybe more uh, damaging tsunami if it is triggered uh, along the Andaman Islands. And we have evidence that in the past uh, such tsunamis have occurred. Now, in most of the literature and uh, uh, on any website uh, dealing with uh, the institutions dealing with natural hazards and all that, you will find such, such this picture which is uh, a commonly confused or maybe is uh, taken up as in that the artist who wanted to show a sort of an, a huge or great offshore wave uh, has been taken as in uh, tsunami wave. So, Hokushai never thought of that this picture or the sketch which he is preparing will be uh, used or interpreted as a tsunami wave. But of course, it is. It it's tried to show. He has tried to show that the the giant or the great offshore waves are even much more greater than the the Fujiyama, which has been shown here. Uh, let's uh, move ahead and see uh, what uh, best we can learn out of the uh, the experiences we had recently uh, uh, from Andaman, from. Uh, uh, Tohoku, Japan and again from Indonesia. So, as we discussed in the beginning and uh, some part we have already discussed in the other course about the plate tectonics. So, everywhere you will not uh, experience or expect the, the tsunami to occur, but there are typical zones which are the subduction zones mainly, where the oceanic plate is subducting below the continental plate will have the greater chances to trigger tsunami. So, one such zone which I am right now pointing out lies in the domain of Indian subcontinent. So, we have like a chance of having the great tsunamis along this belt as well as which is not shown here there is a Makran subduction zone which is also another vulnerable area or the area which can trigger large magnitude earthquakes as well as uh, the uh, tsunamis, but it will not be as large as what we have experienced here. So, uh, in short like if the tsunami has been triggered along this location, it is not that only this location or the area adjoining this will be affected, but the region. So, it will be short of what we call this trans oceanic tsunami. So, we will be talking about one of the example of 1960 tsunami of Chilean which was triggered by one of the largest earthquake of magnitude 9.5 and which affected that was in 1960 that affected the whole region in the Pacific area. So, the, the point is that a, even if you are sitting away from the uh, from the subduction zone because this is the area which is tectonically active and for example, we are sitting on the east coast and the, the Sri Lankan part here and, and the region on this side of course, will be uh, the, the area close to it will be affected, but even the, the area which is sitting away uh, need to be alert from such hazard. So, if you come as a definition uh, this word tsunami it came uh, definitely from Japan which means an harbor wave. So, this was uh, which we have been using uh, uh, 
in our literature as well as our research. So the height of the tsunami wave is small and barely noticeable in the deep sea. So few important things here, but becomes larger and damaging when it approaches the coast. So it will have a very large wavelength in the ocean, but it, it as approaches the coast, then this will become I mean, it will become um, uh, like more damaging as it reaches the coast and the height also goes up. So it is barely noticeable in the in the ocean. So if you are sailing on on the, this region, then you will be able to just uh, move very smoothly over the uh, the crust and the trough of the tsunami, uh, which the wavelength can be of uh, hundreds of kilometers. Okay. So here it has been shown, like for example, 200 kilometers of wavelength. But yes, of course, that as it reaches the coast, it will stack up one by one, and the of course the, the, the this will the height it will result into the increase in height. So the amplitude will increase as it, it it reaches the the coastal area, and it will be more damaging. So if you look at this. Uh, small cartoon, what does it explain is that you have an subducting plate that is what you take as an oceanic plate and then the overriding plate is your continental plate. So this, this phenomena is not uh, uh, happening quickly, but it, 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 will, it keeps going on uh, for several years. So what uh, is uh, like we have learned from the uh, the tectonic deformation that there is an ongoing deformation which keeps going between the two plates here and this will result into the deformation of the overriding plate so the land level change will occur over the time it may for it may be for 500 years or 600 years for example in uh, 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 the andaman region and the sumatra region what recurrence we are getting is around 400 to 500 even years to to have the similar magnitude tsunami or similar magnitude earthquake which can create or uh, trigger a damaging tsunami so this plate which is riding on on top of it partly covered by the uh, the ocean water will deform and there will be a land level change so one what best we have done now is that um, uh, that uh, the scientists or the people who are working in this uh, domain have kept like or, or installed permanent GPS stations which can help in understanding that wo what is the rate of deformation in this area and based on that uh, what is the amount of strain which is getting accumulated in this region and when next uh, earthquake uh, can be triggered. Okay. Or So if you look at this kindly watch carefully what is happening here you can easily make out so there is a locking which will of course result into the deformation of this one and then what we see is that this island is sinking down and when this was released it resulted into an uplift so it has come back and the waves were been generated so this this basically talks about that sudden sudden release of the energy and the disturbance of, which has disturbed the water column and which definitely uh, will result into the generation of the waves and those waves are your tsunami waves and which will definitely affect the whole area in the adjoining region. So again I am playing and you can watch it carefully. So it is going down and then it will be released. So this sudden release is your earthquake here. So this earthquake has triggered the sudden displacement of the water column which has created a tsunami wave. So if you look at this is uh, the ex this example is from uh, uh, the Miyako uh, Japan but the tsunami which was recorded here uh, was from 1960 uh, Chilean earthquake tsunami. So this clearly suggests that there was no earthquake shaking or seismic shaking in Japan during the, this time, but 
the the tsunami reached miyako island and which affected this area and this was been recorded so this is a normal uh, uh, estimated tide tide curve uh, and the arrival time of the tide, uh, the tsunami was marked by this the high very high amplitude were been recorded so this was maximum amplitude whereas this is the uh, your estimated uh, tidal curve so tide tide gauging stations can help us in uh, um, identifying if there is sudden change in the uh, in the arrival or is there any any disturbance in the uh, uh, tides so long water wave generated by sudden displacement under water so what we saw in this uh, the cartoon it shows the displacement uh, along the two plates or the fault which disturbed the overlying water column so tsunamis also called as seismic sea waves because they are related mostly most deadly tsunamis are due to the seismic events and are in are a series of waves generated by large violent earthquakes occurring near the uh, near the ocean not all earthquakes generate tsunami now this is again based on that what type of displacement will take place either the displacement is uh, 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 reverse type where the the plate has moved up along the fault or the displacement is sudden normal along the normal uh, faulting or the movement is along the like for example strike slip so the reverse faulting or you can say the thrust faulting and the normal faulting and strike slip now uh, it was been believed until now and still uh, uh, the groups are working on this that mostly when we say the reverse faulting then one block has moved up with respect to another one and here one block has moved down with respect to another one whereas in this case that is in strike slip not much of the vertical displacement you will be able to observe so in this two cases either reverse fault or thrust faulting and normal faulting you will have vertical separation whereas in strike slip motion or strike strike slip uh, uh, deformation uh, not much will be uh, the component of vertical separation but that has proved uh, Uh, things wrong uh, in terms of uh, like if we consider the recent uh, palu tsunami of 2018 but nevertheless the uh, the displacement or the deformation triggered the landslide i'll talk to uh, talk about that in the next coming few slides or maybe in the next lecture about that what happened exactly during the palu tsunami so mostly uh, if we have uh, this two type of movements we expect that there will be a huge tsunami otherwise if you are having this then you may uh, say that it may or may not be uh, depending on the vertical separation so the vertical separation during an earthquake is extremely important because that will result into the displacement of the uh, the water column now if you differentiate between the normal sea waves and the tsunami waves then uh, there are major uh, difference we can look at quickly so normal sea waves and tsunami waves the wavelength range up to 1 mile or around 1.6 kilometers whereas in the case of uh, tsunami it will be of hundreds of miles as we are, we are looking at one of the example okay few miles an hour up to 60 miles an hour the this will be the speed which will be uh, uh, seen in case of uh, the normal sea wave but in in case of the tsunami sea wave it can attain the speed as high as the uh, the the plane uh, almost like 800 km per hour or more generated with the gravitational attraction due to moon and sun and these are generated with earthquakes nevertheless along with this we have we, we can expect an an tsunami because of the volcanic 
eruption then we have landslides or if you are having meteoritic impact so these are few more uh, reasons for creating tsunami because uh, this will also this phenomena or the process will also affect the water column or or disturb the water column because of its sudden impact so coming to this point here uh, not the first wave can be most powerful and many people who are staying close to the coastline they never understand that whether the uh, uh, the flooding the local flooding which is taking place is related to the tsunami or something else okay. and this uh, same uh, uh, was experienced in 2004 Uh, tsunami by people who stayed in karnikobar so they would never realize that this was the the inundation which took place suddenly was due to uh, the the tsunami but nevertheless they they experienced very strong ground shaking so that was one indication that there could be a tsunami and the duration also can be shorter for for a, uh, several minutes or it can go up to tens of minutes and in in the the areas where you are having the bay uh, which are narrow areas uh, one can expect uh, the uh, the high uh, tide levels of tsunamis hit as fast as aircraft or a bullet train so these are few things which uh, uh, we should keep in mind that we should not underestimate the uh, uh, the sudden change in the uh, uh, the tide level or maybe the water level close to the coast and we should keep in mind that it will be quite powerful okay so why tsunami is so destructive the reason is that as the tsunami waves enter the shallow water near the coast either it is bay area or what its velocity decreases but at the same time its height increases so you in the ocean you will have a very large wavelength so the amplitude will be not as high as what we see here close to the coast but it will be very shallow and it will be barely noticeable but as it moves and climb up the coastal regions it it starts stacking up and that can result into the increase in height as well as the runoff and the region so crust height more than 30 to 50 meters uh, and the strike with devastation was this was noticed in one of the the region in indonesia in 2004 so if you see it will be like an uh, sea wall which is uh, traveling towards the coast okay and maybe, so i don't know what must have happened to this people of course they might have stopped swept away during this one this is from the uh, rabi uh, tsunami uh, thailand uh, area of 2004 tsunami so the height or run up uh, is another important uh, factor which we should keep in mind and usually what we do is what uh, the the tsunami geologists that uh, they will go back into the field uh, uh, during the, to, the or after the tsunami and then try to measure all this uh, heights and run ups and all that which are important for modeling as well as for the future uh, 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 hazard assessment so run up of the tsunami at point of impact will depend on how the energy is focused from where the, the tsunami waves uh, will be coming or it expected and second is the travel path of the waves okay how they are traveling what is the configuration of uh, uh, the uh, um, the coastal region because this will again depend on the on the, the offshore topography so if you are having sitting on very high grounds then you will not be affected but if you are for example you are having in a very shallow bay areas then you will have different uh, wave height so the energy focused from where it has been triggered for example if you are having the indian uh, continent and then you are having the subduction zone sitting here then if the the tsunami is triggered from this region then it will be focused it will travel in this direction in all direction here but if it is it is over here then it will be very straight reaching 
this place. Okay. So the energy, uh, how energy is focused, and what will be the travel path? Because travel path will also reduce the impact if you are having the longer travel path. If you are having shorter travel path, that will be. So uh, these are few things which are important. Then coming to the tsunami runoff, is the vertical distance between the maximum height reached the the water onshore. Okay. So uh, onshore. Uh, that what we were looking in the uh, the next slide also will explain this onshore uh, how far it has reached and the and the mean sea level surface this is the mean sea level surface will be at the time when the tsunami was triggered because we have the tidal charts with us we can go back and try to see that and uh, try to look at that what was exactly the run up with respect to the sea level mean sea level at that point of time so if you uh, if you consider this uh, the method measuring the, the tsunami height then what what you have is finally the c is your tsunami height uh, where uh, a and it can be given as a plus b is equal to c that is the tsunami height a is the measured height now the measured height is at the time of the, the tsunami so this is the measured height and then b is your tidal difference between the the measure height at tsunami and at the time of the measurements because you will not be measuring at the time of when tsunami has occurred but based on the the height of uh, is marked okay that is based on the the uh, this is the sea level at the time of the tsunami this was okay, and then this is your height of the or the at the time of your measurement so that will give you the inundation height or runoff height okay. and one can also look at uh, which can be easily uh, one can find that is one is the watermark and also the wounded trees uh, and and the bent twigs these are few things which we usually take in if at all this house is survived then we can see and also because the the tsunami waves will carry the debris either it is plant debris or some other uh, things which will be found very far off inland that can be taken as an indication of the, uh, the tsunami wave. So picture from uh, Indonesia again 2004, so you can compare both the, um, uh, uh, the satellite data is from Google Earth at what exactly. So this is the, the only 2-3 houses with uh, cluster was left out. Uh, the rest was completely destroyed or wi wiped off. So, if you look at the run up uh, uh, how it looks like, so in this uh, uh, video uh, you will be able to understand that if you are uh, the first wave may not be very powerful and you may have the negative wave. So, in this video what it has been shown is that the first uh, arrival of the, the first wave was negative hence it it went back. So, um, in some of the um, uh, events or the tsunami and earthquake events, what people did was that when the sea receded because of the negative wave, they went into the sea and that recede can be up to uh, uh, kilometers. Okay. So, in case of uh, Andaman also few people they observed this negative wave. So, what uh, you are going to get like if you are having this wave okay so either you are going to get this one or this one you never know that so if you are having a negative wave that will recede because as is commonly seen during the type of uh, if you look, go to the beach or the close to the ocean you will find the wave comes and goes back wave comes and goes back so that will with the, the wave recede wave recede uh, will be your negative one and that what happened uh, in 2004 in some places. So, if you look at this one, the first wave of course was not so powerful, but the rest it so this is the receipt of the, uh, the uh, ocean exposing the, the area and then the next wave inundated the area completely and again went back. So this is the this this again will depend on the amplitude of the wave. 
and of course, the configuration of the, uh, the coastal region. So, I will stop here and we will continue in the next lecture. Thank you so much. Thank you.